As the deer as the thirst deer for the water, Lord, so my soul so longs after you. My high soul thirsts for the living God. Yes, my soul longs after you. And I pour out my soul deep within me. Deep within me, I pour out my soul. Draw me deeper, Lord, deeper, Lord, in you. Draw me deeper, Lord, deeper, Lord, in you. As the deer thirsts for the water, Lord, so my soul. Well, good morning. It is good to see those of you who are here, and hi to those of you who are still at home. We are glad that you're tuning in and watching as well. Thanks for coming out this morning. Thanks for tuning in this morning. And I think the first thing I want to say is how disappointed all of us in the leadership were that we needed to, felt the need to cancel our camp plans. I know our teenagers and our kids 
and our volunteers and staff were really looking forward to that. Such a highlight for everybody every year. But with an uptick in corona diagnoses, we felt like it was the prudent thing to do and the best way to love our community. So tough decision. We hate we had to make it, but that'll just make the next time that we gather for that special event even better. If you're guests this morning, thanks for joining us here. If you're not a member of Twickenham and you're tuning in, thank you for joining. And I even see folks in the balcony. Hey! Good to see you guys up there too. So yesterday was America's 244th birthday. But our celebrations were a little more tempered this year than usual. Um, some of us are walking through some really difficult personal times right now. Uh, breaking or broken marriages. I've talked to several folks lately who are going through that. Uh, financial hardship a doctor's diagnosis. And those personal agonies are made all the more difficult to walk through because we're suffering all of that in the context of larger national trials. The pandemic has been profoundly disorienting and disruptive. And then in the middle of that, we witnessed a grave injustice and were reminded of others. The killing of George Floyd by Officer Derek Chauvin. And then the other killings that have occurred over the last several years. All of that ignited an impassioned national response and revealed the deep fissures that are still very much a part of our existence as a nation. So on top of feeling disconnected because of the virus, a lot of us are feeling Anxiety, we're feeling fear, we're feeling overwhelmed, even angry. It feels like things are falling apart. In some ways, like our nation is falling apart. But here's the thing, you and I possess a significant advantage over any person or any group that does not know Jesus. Even if we're still in isolation, we are not alone. Jesus said, I am with you always, even to the very end of the age. And that includes this age, because we're not at the end yet. And though the country feels more divided than ever, you and I, you and me, are one in Christ. Even when we disagree, we, we have been gifted the unity of the Spirit. We are children of the same Father. Now, you may be among those who have been waiting for the leadership here to make a strong statement and provide some clear guidance specifically in regard to how we as a church can bring about justice and be a part of racial reconciliation. The shepherds and the staff, we're going to confess to you that we do not have many answers to all the chaos, confusion, and anger, and the pain that we are seeing and hearing and feeling. The truth is, we don't even know all the right questions to ask. We know this, we oppose racism in all its forms as a violation of God's law and as an offense to his heart. The word sin may have gone out of style but it is exactly the right word to use when describing racism. It is sin. And we hold unswervingly to the truth that all of us are created in the image of God. That regardless of where we were born or the color of our skin or the tax bracket we fall into or whether we are in or out of the womb, each of us bears God's image and is therefore invested with intrinsic worth. The leadership is listening, we are actively learning, we are praying. And when we sense a clear word and direction from God, we will speak that word and we will move in that direction. Until then, what do we have? We have the words of Peter. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 19. We have, he says, the prophetic message as something completely reliable. And you will do well to pay attention to it. 
as to a light shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. This morning, instead of a sermon, and I know you're going to be terribly disappointed by this, instead of a sermon, we're going to listen to the sure words of Scripture. Specifically, we're going to listen to the laments, some of them. The laments eloquently express the pain and fear that many people are feeling these days. And if the pain and fear are not felt by you personally, listening to the laments can tune your heart so that you can hear the cry of those who do feel that pain and fear. We'll hear other passages that point us to the hope we have in the faithfulness of our God and still others on how things will be when God's kingdom is fully realized on the earth. I want you to pay special attention to the last three scriptures you'll hear this morning. They talk about the temple of God. I think you'll, if you've been in church much of your life, you, you, you're probably familiar with those. If not, you'll be hearing them brand new. But I, I hope that all of us can hear those last three passages this morning in a new way because I think they can change things for us. When we hurt physically, we cry out in pain. When we hurt spiritually or emotionally, we cry out in lament. The biblical laments are prayers that come from God. They are inspired speech. These are the words of God that God has given us, and they come from pain. They, they really are ancient words of protest. You think protest is a new thing. Wait till you hear some of these psalms. They constitute over a third of the psalms. And many of the prophetic books uh, contain lament as well. And, and the fact that, that there is an entire genre of Scripture devoted to expressing pain and fear and doubt and outrage and anger is both a reassurance and a reminder. The reassurance is that God can hear our most primal emotions, our protests, our anger, even our rage. He can handle our doubt. He's not intimidated by the things that frighten us. And these passages remind us that we are not the first people to wrestle with the apparent absence of God. Underline, italicize, bold, the word apparent. As you hear these passages, you may be surprised at how relevant they seem, how personal. It's as if some ancient author was able to look not just into the future, but into our very thoughts. Sometimes these passages are going to say out loud what we've only been thinking, and sometimes they will give us words for feelings we didn't know how to express. Let's begin with a prayer. Bow with me, please. God of ages, in your sovereignty you raise up nations and you bring them down. You raise up rulers and you depose them. You bring nations into peril and you lead them out. Now as our nation is troubled, be near, not just to judge, but to save. May our leaders be led by your wisdom. And where we have turned away, help us to reverse our ways and repent. Grant that your spirit may move in every human heart so that the barriers between us may crumble, suspicion disappear, and hatreds cease. Open our ears to hear your prophets so that we will do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly before you. In Jesus' name, amen. The prophecy that Habakkuk the prophet received. How long, Lord, must I call for help, but you do not listen, or cry out to you, violence, but you do not save? Why do you make me look at injustice? Why do you tolerate wrongdoing? Destruction and violence are before me. There is strife and conflict abounds. Therefore, 
the law is paralyzed, and justice never prevails. The wicked hem in the righteous so that justice is perverted. In the Lord I take refuge. How then can you say to me, flee like a bird to your mountain? For look, the wicked bend their bows. They set their arrows against the strings to shoot from the shadows at the upright in heart. When the foundations are being destroyed, what can the righteous do? You have rejected us, God, and burst upon us. You have been angry. Now restore us. You have shaken the land and torn it open. Mend its fractures, for it is quaking. You have shown your people desperate times. You have given us wine that makes us stagger. But for those who fear you, you have raised a banner to be unfurled against the bow. Save us and help us with your right hand, for those that those you love may be delivered. Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger or discipline me in your wrath. Have mercy on me, Lord, for I am faint. Heal me, Lord, for my bones are in agony. My soul is in deep anguish. How long, Lord? How long? Turn, Lord, and deliver me. Save me because of your unfailing love. Among the dead, no one proclaims your name. Who praises you from the grave? I am worn out from my groaning. All night long, I flood my bed with weeping and drench my couch with tears. My eyes grow weak with sorrow. They fail me because of all my foes. Let's stand. From the depths of my soul I cry out. From the depths of my soul I cry out. Lord, can you hear me? Have mercy, O God. From the depths of my soul I cry out. In the midst of the sea I cry out. In the midst of the sea I cry out. Save me, the water is over my head. In the midst of the sea I cry out. There is a time to mourn. There is a time to weep. There is a time for sorrow when deep calls to deep. In my moments of grief, I cry out. In my moments of grief, I cry out. Have you forgotten me? Where are you, Lord? In my moments of grief, I cry out. There is a time to mourn. From the depths of my soul I cry out, from the depths of my soul I cry out, still I will praise you, Lord, still I will praise you, Lord. As we uh, enter a time of communion, Lisa and I are going to share a passage of scripture from Psalm 22. This is a part of the prayer that Jesus prayed on the cross. If you can imagine that we are going to be sharing the same prayer he prayed at his crucifixion. That brings us to this moment in a very powerful way. From Psalm 22. My God, my God. Why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me? So far from the cries, from my cries of anguish. My God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. By night, but I find no rest. Yet you are enthroned as the Holy One. 
You are the one Israel praises. In you, our ancestors put their trust. They trusted and you delivered them. To you, they cry out and were saved. In you, they trusted and were not put to shame. But I'm a worm and not a man, scorned by everyone, despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They hurl insults, shaking their heads. He trusts in the Lord, they say. Let the Lord deliver him. Let him deliver him, since he delights in him. Yet you brought me out of the womb. You made me trust in you, even at my mother's breast. From birth, I was cast on you. From my mother's womb, you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Let's pray together. Father, we are brought to the cross by sharing the very words that your son prayed to you. The fact that he would cry out to you in his despair and in his anguish connects us with him. Because some of us are in a place like that right now. And all of us have been in places like that in our lives. So he gets us. And yet, we cannot begin to imagine how hard it must have been for you to hear that prayer. To hear him call to you. And then for you to deny his request out of your love for us. Father, this bread reminds us of what was broken so that we could be healed. Thank you for saying no to him so that you could say yes to us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Wonderful, merciful Savior, precious Redeemer and friend, who would have thought that a lamb could rescue the souls of men? Oh, you rescue the souls of men. You are the one that we pray. Continue in Psalm 22, beginning in verse 12. Many bulls surround me. Strong bulls of Bashan encircle me. Roaring lions that tear their prey. 
open their mouths wide against me. I am poured out like water. All of my joints, all of my bones are out of joint. My heart has turned to wax. It has melted within me. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You lay me in the dust of death. Dogs surround me. A pack of villains encircles me. They pierce my hands and my feet. All my bones are on display. People stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among them and cast lots for my garment. Let's pray. God, it is remarkable that centuries before the event, your prophets saw what was going to happen, which means that Jesus knew exactly what he was going to go through. And yet, he did it anyway. He came, he walked on this earth, and he marched right up that hill to die for us, knowing everything that was about to happen. We are staggered by that kind of courage. We are embraced by that kind of love. And we can only hope to attain the smallest measure of it. Thank you for knowing everything that was going to happen and yet following through with it anyway. It makes us feel less alone. It gives us hope. We receive this cup with gratitude. In the name of Jesus, amen. of God cover me cover me cover me peace of God cover me through the storm cover me peace of Cover me when my faith is gone. 
Let the peace that passes all I understand cover me, cover me. Would you join me in this reading? Would you listen to me with this reading? Here we go, church. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the stronghold of my life. When the wicked advance against me to devour me, though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, one thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek. To gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. I remember my affliction and my wandering, the bitterness and the gall. I well remember them, and my soul is downcast within me. Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will wait for him. The Lord is good to those whose hope is in him. To the one who seeks him. It is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Salvation belongs to our God, who sits upon the throne, and unto the Lamb be praise and glory, wisdom and thanks, honor.
Amen. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow down before the exalted God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings? Shall I come with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams? With 10,000 rivers of olive oil? Shall I offer my firstborn for my transgression? The fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. Turn my heart, O Lord, like rivers of water. Turn my heart, O Lord, by your hand till my whole In his holy temple, let all the earth be silent before him. Oh, the Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord is on his heavenly throne. He observes everyone on earth. His eyes examine them. Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in your midst? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person. For God's temple is sacred, and you together are that temple. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence Savior, gracious Redeemer, slow in your anger, rich in your love, full of compassion, longing to heal and bless. You will forgive all of my sins if I will confess. Here is my heart, Lord, I lay it open, search every corner, 
cleanse every part. Here is my heart, Lord, yielded and broken. Merciful Lord, come and restore. Here is my heart. Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil why we're made. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope, like wildfire in our very souls. Holy Spirit, come invade us now. We are your church. We need your power in us. We seek your kingdom first, we hunger and we thirst, refuse to waste our lives, for your our joy and pride, to see the captive's hearts release, the hurt, the sick, the poor at peace, we lay down our lives for heaven's cause, we are your church, we Pray, revive this earth. Build your kingdom here. Let the darkness fear. Show your mighty hand. Heal our streets and land. Set your church on fire. Win this nation back. Change the atmosphere. Build your kingdom here, we pray. Unleash your kingdom's power, reaching the near and far. No force of hell can stop your beauty changing hearts. You made us for much more than this. Awake the kingdom need in us. Fill us with the strength and love of Christ. We are your church. We are the hope on earth. Build your kingdom here. Let the darkness fear. Show your mighty hand. Heal our streets and land. Set your church on fire, win this nation back. Change the atmosphere, build your kingdom here. Build your kingdom here, let the darkness fear. Show your mighty hand, heal our streets and land. Set your church on fire, win this nation back. Change the atmosphere, build your kingdom here, we pray. Amen, amen. Hey, I would just want to, we like to clap our hands on that one, that's a good one, so. Hey, thank you for being here today, thank you for tuning in. A couple of quick things here, one, when we leave, we want to leave in an orderly kind of way. If you want to violate all the COVID rules, you have to do it outside. You're not going to do it in this building, okay? So the, uh, the ushers will help uh, tell you when to go out. So you guys get ready for that. I hope one of the things that you have picked up on this morning is that if you feel frustrated or afraid or anxious or worried or concerned, or even angry. Those are not new emotions in heaven. God has heard all of that for centuries. God has heard his people cry out. God has heard his people protest. God has heard people rage and weep and mourn. Those are not new things to his ears. So if that's what you need to do, he hears you. I would not for one moment want to minimize the struggles that our country is facing right now, our world is facing. But I do want you to remember 
that this is not new. Looking back in history, maybe it's, it, it's unprecedented in our lived history, but in history it's not. There have been pandemics, there have been wars, there, have, there has been racism, there has been slavery, there has been all kind of oppression and evil. People have been through this before. The church has been through this before, and the church made it through, and we will again. It will be okay. And I'll tell you this, the solution to the problems in our country are not in a voting booth, and they're not in Washington, D.C. They're found on our knees when we pray to God and talk to God about our country, and then when we get up off our knees and go talk to the people in our country about God. That's where the solutions are. And I believe that this church will make a powerful impact in this city as God leads us. Lincoln, I'm going to ask you to dismiss us with your patented blessing. May the amazing grace of Jesus bless you and give you peace. Have a great week.